Hey guys, uh, this is Lei from Goldfish Corner. Welcome back. And today, we're gonna talk about another interesting topic, Lionhead and Oranda Goldfish. Well, a few days ago, I posted a poll from different topics. Thank you for your vote. I finished the first one, how to create a green carpet algae. I think today we're going to talk about lionhead and oranda. Goldfish has many confusing terms. Lionhead is one, sometimes you heard a shizito, oranda, ranchos. All those names actually motivate me to create this channel. My initial goal to get this YouTube channel is really want to talk about those concepts. So why I didn't talk about lionhead as my first video? Because we have talked about other concepts. So first one, I, t I talk about Chinese goldfish classification. And then I talk about uh, this video. What is when and what is goldfish uh, head growth and what is when's origin. And after that, naming is very confusing. So bingo, I talk about my third video, talk about the goldfish naming conventions. Last but not least, I talk about this one, history of rancho. So after I talk all of these concepts, these concepts like stepping stones eventually lead today's position. I think we're ready to discuss what is lion hand and what is the historical relation between lion hand and oranda and how do you distinguish a lion hand versus ranchos. So if you have all these questions in your mind, please stick around and you gonna got all your answers from today's video. By the way, if you're new, please subscribe my channel and please do check up all the videos descriptions here below. There's a lot of uh, reference link. I'm gonna list it, all of this in my video description. I always want to start my video as an open question. So if you look at the screen, there are beautiful goldfish actually. So how do you, or what are the two goldfish names? I have four options. Option one is, left one is lionhead, the right one is oranda. B. Left is an eggfish, the right is lionhead and oranda. Option C, the right is oranda, but both can be called lionhead in terms of their height shape. The last one, I don't care. They both are beautiful fish. Keep those two goldfish in your mind, and we're gonna go through step by step. We're gonna talk about each option, and at the end of my video, you're gonna know answers. Let's start to do some analysis of this type of goldfish naming. Let's start from language you're going to see different way of spell lionhead. This lionhead is in English. And the first one, shi zi to, this is the Chinese in traditional uh, writing, or the same as Japanese um, characters. The second one, shi zi to, is in Chinese, but simplified to Chinese. The third one, uh, shi zi to, is the Chinese pinyin based on shi zi to's pronunciation. The last one, shi shi gashua, this is the Japanese pronunciation of lionhead. So you're gonna see probably all of these uh, ways in either Chinese literature or Japanese literature. So basically the naming convention of lion head is resemblance. So there must be some feature of this type of goldfish resembles the actual lion. Let's you can see this vicious lion and the head, what's the key feature? is all the hair grow around his neck, all around his head. That's, that's actually right. The lion head is a head attribute. It's more similar to the Chinese guardian lion, as you can see on this picture, it's guardian lion statue. If you ever visit the Forbidden City, um, there have many of those Chinese guardian lion. One feature you can see, uh, which is eye-catching feature, is all those hairballs. And those hairballs, if you look at this goldfish, is almost very similar to the head growth, or sometimes we call head growth in English word a uh, win. So you see this sort of a raspberry, very bumpy, a little kind of cyst around the head. It's just exactly this, similar to the head balls of the Chinese guardian lines. You see this, a, a few ribbons. This ribbon is not his back hair of this line. This actually, um, if you look here, is he has all those bells around his neck. So this ribbon is the ribbon to tie uh, the lion bells. So there's a, no special feature around the back. The main feature is the head attributes. Let's go back to uh, Time Machine and look at the history document. What the first documented 
line head and how the those line head looks like what's the old definition and then we can see the evolution of line head concept the first uh, documentation some people you already see from this video which is the history of rancho uh, i just use the same document uh, back to 1831 there is a fish illustration squirrel a lot of those egg fish there's no dorsal fin on um, some of those egg fish they actually has uh, Chinese or Japanese characters on the bottom right corner look here pay attention they actually has what lion head in Chinese characters or Japanese characters let's zoom in so if you look at these three characters the first two means lion the third one means head that means lion head um, if you look carefully there are some features one lion head has a very thin layer of head grow or we call it when in English mainly on top of the head i haven't seen this is not strong grow on the gill because you see the um, golden reflection that's no wing grow or head grow on the side and mainly on top of uh, those uh, this fish and there's no dorsal fin so it's pretty much like uh, the early formatting of japanese rancho flat back and the back is not as curved as much as the modern japanese rancho that is probably the first image of documented lying head um, also you're gonna curious how how real of this picture uh, back then so the way to prove let's look at other fish recorded in this fish illustration scroll this is next page this is a very vivid it's almost like you use a digital camera modern digital camera and just take fish out of the water so if these are real we can tell the previous picture is pretty much vividly recorded how lion head looks back to 1830s now let's go to China in 1893 there's a book called Zhu Ye Ting various notes or in Chinese Zhu Ye Ting Zha Ji Yao Yuan Zhi wrote this book back to 1840s there's eight volumes a very thick book for volume eight is talk about goldfish varieties in detail and also listed very detailed goldfish breeding and goldfish keeping tech, uh, techniques in one line summary based on this book Zhu Ye Ting Zha Ji lion head could be found either in egg fish or dan zhong in Chinese or lion head could be found in wen fish by the way this wen fish is not means head growth the wen is in Chinese wen zhong this literally means the goldfish with dorsal um, I'm basically gonna show page by page so if you're able to read traditional Chinese please go ahead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight a few lines I'm gonna translate word by word so the first one you see uh, egg fish does not have dorsal fin just like an egg one type of egg fish has a cyst on top of its head as thick as your finger and eyes embedded in the cyst so this is the most favorite breed now look at look at this it is called lion head look at those uh, three characters that's lion head the older the fish the thicker the head grows so this is not only <clears throat> give you the detailed name of lion head but also give the definition of the head growth attribute so this means egg fish have lion head well let's go back to the next page this page actually talk about a wen fish so wen fish is is the fish has a dorsal fin it says uh, wen fish has the same body shape fins and tails just as a dragonfish dragonfish uh, aka is just a telescope butterfly except there's no extruding eyes right here they said the older the fish tends to grow lion head so the older the fish tends to grow lion head so if you uh, check if you combine the previous page and this page for Zhu Ye Ting Zha Ji lion head was described as a type of head growth that could be either with or without dorsal fin if you ask the author to answer my first question they both fish they can consider as lion head by this book and now let's go a little bit a few years later in 1904 there is a famous goldfish book called insects and fish collection or chong yu ya ji in chinese i have this image i'm gonna do line by line translation egg fish the one with longer mouth oh, by the way the longer mouth for here it does not mean the mouth it actually means the head grow on the cheek or sometimes japanese called the fountain so the longer cheek will develop look at those three characters lion head 
and the one with shorter cheeks will not grow lion head. For this book, Chong Yu Ya Ji, the lion head is likely in terms of type of head growth, although it's only among the egg fish. So this will not only give you the definition, but also give you the tip is how to identify those fish has the potential uh, grow into a lion head. <clears throat> if you asked this author to answer my open question, he gonna pick only this one as lion head. And also remember the eye of lion head is, should be embedded into the head growth. Let's look at the, the Japanese uh, literature. In 1994, there's a goldfish guide. This is third edition by Dr. Yushi Matasu. Uh, many of you probably already know Dr. Matasu is the father of Japanese goldfish. There's a, a statue of uh, Dr. Matasu in one of the goldfish museum. He is very famous. He did a lot of works, not only on goldfish, literature but also on the goldfish genetics <clears throat> so this is the book it's not in japanese it's already translated in english so we may miss some information in between however dr matasio basically put the lion head and parenthesis rancho into the same category as a, as the egg fish without dorsal fin um, the way they name it uh, they first has the common name and then the parenthesis gave you the japanese name so for instance it is this previous page, they put a common goldfish of Japan and whacking. So the first the common name and then Japanese name. Now I'm going to share two pictures actually recorded in this book. They all called a, a lion head. So what's the difference between lion head and the rancho? If you look at the lion head, it's pretty flat back, right? There's not too much curvature. It's pretty flat. The tail is bigger than the rancho. Head growth is the key feature. It's pretty a massive head growth not only on top of the head, but also the gills on bottom of the mouth is all around the head. For ranchos, is literally have a curved back and they have 90 degree between tail versus caudal peduncles. They have a relative small tail versus lion head. The other thing is the key feature is if you look at it from the top, the rancho has a rectangular wing shape from the top, but the lion head has more rounded wing growth. Let's move on to the next page. Now let's look at back some of those Western goldfish scholar, what their opinion on lion head. This book written by Joseph Smart. So Dr. Joe Smart, one of the famous goldfish scholars on goldfish genetics, he did intensive literature review talking about Japanese and Chinese breeds. And in one section, he actually talked about the whole page, talk about the lion head gold, uh, goldfish. I don't want to read this line by line, but if you look at these, he, just like Dr. Matasu, Dr. Smart believe lion head also has no dorsal fin. What about in Chinese goldfish community? How do they define the lion head? Have different school of opinions. The first one is the traditional definition is basically an attribute of head growth, almost like goldfish Bible. This is a recent publication. We, we talk about a goldfish in China. And this is one of those pages talk about the lion head, no dorsal fin and has mass head growth. The head growth, it looks just like raspberry texture, a lot of small uh, cysts around the head and the eye embedded in the head growth and also has relative flat back. For the modern concept, this lion head get a little extension. It's basically head growth plus dorsal fin. Isn't that an orenda? So why? they shifting from egg fish with head growth to oranda in modern Chinese goldfish community. And why? Okay, now next step, I'm going to talk about the historical relation between lion head versus oranda, which is very interesting. Stay around. Before we talk about oranda, let's start from etymology or the word origin. Oranda is not an English word. If you go to the Merriam-Webster English dictionary, you're not going to see oranda as an English word, even though it's popular in the goldfish community. Oranda is a Japanese word, or the Japanese call Holland or Dutch. The Japanese pronunciation alanto, alanto. This the Japanese call the Dutch. So it sounds like the pronunciation equals to oranda, oranda, alanto. Don't you feel a little bit odd? There are two reasons <laughs> it's odd to me. First one, Europe has short history goldfish. So far, the Bristol Shooking Goldfish uh, kind of created by UK in Europe. Other than that, Europe never been a uh, birthplace for any of goldfish. The second one is normally the European country, they just follow 
the original name either from Japan or from, from China. What's the historic background? The historic background is back to 1633 to 1853. It's about over 200 years. Japanese had a close country policy. All Japanese called uh, Sakuku policy. It's actually intacted by uh, Tokugawa Shogunate. Tokugawa Shogunate is, is like a, a last name. It has several generations. This is either the third or second generation of released the closed country policy. It basically banned most all the foreigners from entering Japan and Japanese from leaving Japan. But uh, only trading activity with the limited countries such as China, obviously. This is the one of the Chinese trading ship. You can see this ship is a huge. If you look at it carefully, this is a transporting um, boat. And you can see the people. It's like a little dots. This is the people here. So remember, this is the people size versus this shape. The other country is the Netherlands or the Dutch. And if you look at it here, these three characters, it literally means Alanto. That means Oranda. So this is how Japan called the Dutch as Oranda. This is even interesting picture. I mean, I found this. I want to really share this with you as goldfish culture. So if you go back to the closed country policy, this is the way the Japanese people recorded the people the portrait from different country. Can you make a guess which one is which? All right, let me release my answer. So the first one is Russia. The second one is Dutch. Look at those three words, Alanto. That literally means Oranda. That's Japanese called Dutch as Oranda. And the third one is Rakingyu. Rakingyu is uh, part of the Japanese uh, Japan island. In the past, they kind of uh, the first uh, the Chinese uh, trading ship first go to Rakingyu and then from Rakingyu import to Japan. The third one is the Korean. The last one is the Chinese. This is Chinese wear the old costume uh, back to the Qing Dynasty. Now we talk about Oranda Shishigongsha. So remember, uh, Shishigasha means lion head, right? Oranda means Dutch. So this means Dutch lion head. For the Dutch lion head, is actually a mutation of Raccoon developed a lump on his head. It's bought from Nakasaki from China uh, via Raccoon Island in between uh, 1789 to 1800. So if you look at this picture, this is a beautiful wind shape with dorsal fin. But the thing I want to highlight is this picture back to 1910, the head growth is only on top of the head. Uh, no head growth on the side of the gill or no head growth on the bottom of its mouth. Everything is only on the head. So back then, all the rare imports to Japan, the Japanese called them as Dutch goods, uh, no matter what. So even for the rare fish, or the, the goldfish, they also called Dutch goods. That's why they named this as Oranda, which means a a Dutch shishigongsha. Uh, this one literally has the head growth and dorsal. So I want to release the answers. I posted a question on my YouTube channel. I'm really proud of you guys. What is the Orinda goldfish name after? It's actually, correct answer is B, it's location. The, the name after country, the Netherlands or the Dutch. Now we can see uh, with this uh, concept, how this Orinda concept affect the naming in China. Because eventually this concept kind of back to China is for the modern terms, the lion head in China literally means Oranda. It just means the head grow with dorsal fin. So this is Oranda. For the traditional terms, lion head, they call the shi zi tou, only for the head growth. So only for head growth. It doesn't matter whether it's egg fish or it's not egg fish. Let's go back to the opening question. All the four options are correct. If you reflect this example is, what matters is the historical background. Each name has a rich history behind it. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and don't forget to subscribe my channel and give it a big like. If you stick around, I'm gonna show this video talk about the book review of the Goldfish of China.